Tony here. Now, as far as emulation goes, I'm aware there are emulators you can get in VR by connecting your headset to the PC, but that's not what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm going to be talking about those emulators you can play natively on your Oculus Quest. That is, apart from installing them, being able to play these emulators without any PC connection whatsoever. So here are my top five native emulators for the Oculus Quest. If you like this video, remember to check out my channel, hit that subscribe and notification bell to be kept up to date with the latest and to help support this channel. Let's take a look. Now a lot of the emulators I show can be sideloaded via SideQuest like you see here. I also have videos on some of them and I'll now link those videos out in the description below. Now the first emulator on my list is Virtual Boy Go. You can get this by sideloading it from SideQuest. Now this allows you to play Virtual Boy games as they were meant to be played in virtual reality. And sure, there's not a huge game library available for the Virtual Boy and some of those games are real stinkers. I'm looking at you, Waterworld. But it also has some real gems and as this emulator is made specifically for the Quest it's very easy to set up on the Quest and you can use your Oculus Quest touch controllers to play and you don't need to connect a Bluetooth controller. Also what's great about these games that you're not going to get using a flat screen is the parallax effect. So there's a depth effect you get by playing these on the Oculus Quest. If you haven't tried it, give it a go on the Quest as the videos just don't do it justice. And if you run out of games, you can head on over to the Homebrew channel, which contains a few demos like this Mario Kart Virtual Cup demo or this Hyper Fighter demo, which is a port of Street Fighter for the Virtual Boy. Now, word of warning, if you do come across a Metroid demo, I got really excited about this at first, only to find out that it's an April Fool's joke. And there are still games being made for the Virtual Boy today. Check out the links in the description to find out more. Next up is EPSXE. Now this one you have to pay for. I have a link to a video I did in the description below that takes you through how to do that. The reason why this one makes my top five is firstly because it's so simple. The user interface is so easy to get to grips with. It even finds your ROMs and the box art associated with the ROMs. Very easy to set up and play. It also has great touchscreen light gun support, which means you can play light gun games using your Oculus Quest controllers and it works really well. Beyond that this emulator is very reliable, it has many features and it works with a lot of different ROMs. I didn't come across a ROM that it didn't work with so it has a well deserved place in my top 5. The only issue is that some PS1 ROMs can be a bit tricky to set up. Next up is MAME for Droid. Now MAME stands for Multiple Arcade Machine Emulator and it allows you to play arcade cabinet games on your Quest. Now it supports over 8,000 ROMs and has a ton of different features to make it feel like an authentic arcade experience. The ROMs are very easy to set up, you just drag and drop the zip file straight into the folders and it even has a light gun touchscreen option which like the EPSX E emulator allows you to play light gun games using your Oculus Touch controllers. Now the emulator interface is really easy to navigate and when it works, it works really well. The only issue is main ROM sets can be a bit temperamental. You need to have the right emulator that works with the correct ROM set and you need the correct BIOS in that ROM set to work with the main emulator. So it can be a bit hit and miss when it comes to the different ROMs, but it does support over 8,000 different ROM sets so you won't be stuck for a game to play. Next up is RetroArch. RetroArch has the capacity to emulate a range of different consoles. With RetroArch, you install a core. Cores are essentially emulators, and there are a ton to choose from. Now, not all work fantastically with the Quest. Some might not work at all, but RetroArch is a great emulator for those who want to emulate a range of different consoles without having to install many different apps. I've managed to get the N64 emulator Muppin64 Plus working just fine, as well as the Genesis emulator Genesis Plus GX, SNES 9X, the SNES emulator, and even got the NES emulator FCEUMM to work using the light gun. The only issue with this emulator is because there are so many options, it can take a while to get familiar with all the different features and functions. But if you are willing to invest a bit of time in this one, it's a fantastic little emulator, definitely worthy of any top five. Now I'm going to cheat here and lump these two emulators together as they come from the same family. 
My Boy and My Old Boy emulate Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color and Game Boy games. These make my top 5 because there is such a huge library out there for Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games. So there are a ton of classics to play and best of all each ROM takes up a very small amount of space on your limited quest storage. Beyond that the emulators themselves are fantastic, they're compatible with so many ROMs, I don't think I came across a ROM that didn't work well with these emulators. They are very easy to set up, they have a very user friendly interface and have a ton of different features. If you're looking for a quick and easy way to play classic games with as little technical issues as possible, you can't go far wrong with these emulators. Now we go on to a few honourable mentions that didn't quite make the top 5 but are still great emulators nonetheless. The first is Dolphin MMJ, a GameCube and Wii emulator and the next is PPSSPP which allows you to play PSP games. These are great emulators, the only reason they didn't make the top 5 is that their ROM files can be fairly large uh, around the gigabyte size and that can fill up your quest storage quite fast. Also some of the games do test the limits of the quest so it's a bit hit and miss when it comes to running games some games you'll know, be completely unplayable while others will be fairly decent but you're not going to get the best emulation with a lot of ROMs using these emulators on the quest my next honorable mention is Nespace now you can get Nespace from SideQuest for a price and this emulates NES ROMs in completely customizable environments. You can use arcade cabinets and play the games with your Quest controllers. It has a lot of neat features. The reason why it hasn't made my top five yet is that because there are a few features that need to be added or tweaked, such as some ROM compatibility issues, being able to configure your controllers and save and load states. But the developers tell me they are working hard on a bunch of updates, including a multiplayer feature so this one has a heap of potential and might just make my top five in future and the final one I'll mention is SNES 9X EX so this is a standalone emulator for the SNES and I mention this one just because you can use the super scope with this emulator now thank you for reddit user Corwall for bringing my attention to this now this emulator emulates games just fine and the super scope works okay the only thing is I couldn't find how to enable turbo mode so you can play games you can simulate the cursor button on the scope by clicking off to the side of the screen but you just can't have the turbo function or at least I couldn't find a way to do that anyway I hope you've enjoyed my video do you agree with my top five are there any you would add let me know in the comment section below that's it from me for now remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time